And then next, to do whatever is available to us to serve God. For instance, the people around us, we can care for them. Don't despise this as a little, you know, as something unimportant. If we are willing to care for people, God is very happy with us because He desires compassion. When we have compassion, He desires that. He is pleased with that. So we want to care for people. When you care for people, God will give you more spiritual gifts. And it's not for us. Some prophets, they just want more money. They want a bigger meeting, bigger meeting. You know, it's good to have bigger meetings, but we, it's not our first priority. First priority is to, is to be able to bless people and to glorify God, that people can see the wonderful work of God. It's very important. Whatever we say, we let people see how wonderful God is. It's not to see how powerful we are. We don't want people to say, oh, He's powerful. We want people to say, God is wonderful. And then listen to people and respond to the feelings and needs. So this is caring for people and listen to the needs. Be caring to them. Caring to the people in the church when they say they have certain needs and then we pray for them. We care, care for them and then we, we ask them how they are after uh, next time we see them. You know, uh, Last time you said you have this sickness and we pray for you. How is it? And last time you said that you have financial problem. Now how is it? And then also when it's within our ability, we help people who sincerely follow God and then they, you know, they really need support, then we help them. And then the next thing is to help people spiritually. We help people to how to pray to God. How to, you know, the, the three kinds of prayer, I hope you remember the prayer of grace, prayer of worship, and then the interactive prayer. I hope you remember this. And, and teach people how to pray to, uh, to reach out to God, to relate to God. Now, of course, we want to intercede also, pray for other people, pray for the church, pray for the area. But these three prayers are for building up the relationship with God and help people how to follow God and obey God. And we tell them, anything you do because of God, God is very happy. Even a small thing when you do sincerely, when you read the Bible sincerely, God is happy with you. When you obey the Word of God, God is very happy. When you bless people, God is very happy. When you pray for people, peop God is very happy. Whatever you do for God, when you help people spiritually, God is happy. Then that motivates people. If God is happy with you, He'll bless your life. So do you want to be blessed in your life? So that motivates people to serve God and to love God. Whatever you do for God, God is very happy with you. So that way it will help people spiritually. Instead of forcing them, you have to do this, you have to do that, that we're not forcing people to change. We're motivating them to change by the grace of God. God is a happy God. God is a God of love. He, he cares about you. He knows your need. And whenever you come to Him, He is very happy. When you obey Him, He is very happy and He'll bless your life and your whole life will be blessed. So it's better, more beneficial for you that you love God and obey Him and serve Him and glorify Him. That motivates people to serve God and glorify God instead of pushing people. And then whenever people are serving God, we'll say, wow, this is wonderful, you're doing this. When someone has brought someone to church, we'll say, wonderful, wonderful, you have done a wonderful things. And then we, we will pray for the newcomer and then also we thank God for the person who has brought the, uh, the newcomer. This way, we are motivating people to serve God more. We appreciate people who lead the worship. We appreciate people who do the different things in the church. We say, thank you for doing this. It's wonderful that you've done this. You're very helpful to us and you, God is happy with you. So we motivate people by appreciating, appreciating what they have done for God. This is motivating, motivating them spiritually, uh, motivating them to follow God, to, uh, to grow spiritually. And, and then to do evangelism. So when we... Uh, when we want to grow in the spiritual gifts, we want to tell people about Jesus. Now, another gift of mine is to do evangelism. God has taught me so many ways of doing evangelism that whatever the needs of a person, I can do evangelism. I can do evangelism by praying for people for the needs, for the sickness, uh, for uh, the uh, emotional problems. I can bring people to Jesus by counseling. I can bring people to Jesus by explaining to them the proofs about God, that God is real. How do we know God is real? 
and also uh, I can do evangelism by by meeting the needs of people. Whatever the problems of people, I can meet the needs and then I can help them to see that God cares about them. So and then so whatever the needs of the person, I would respond to the need to uh, bring them to Jesus. And then pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit. This is something that uh, Mark chapter 16, that it talks about that in verse 17, that uh, casts out demons. And also in verse 18, uh, you lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed. So we can cast out demons and also lay hand on the sick to be healed. So this is a promise of God that signs will follow those who believe. So all those who believe will have these signs. All those who believe can drive out demons and lay hand on the sick and they can be healed. Now the Bible does talk about some people, they are spirit filled and they're not healed instantly. Like Paul, the first time he went to uh, Galatia is because he has sickness. And also uh, that Timothy, uh, uh, Paul advised him to take some wine because he had sickness uh, and Epaphroditus uh, also has sickness that he was a uh, co-worker of Paul. So now we can have sickness, but God can heal also. So we believe in God's healing. And when we pray and we're not healed, we don't complain to God and we don't, uh, we would just say we keep praying. Now there are people who say that, okay, I pray for you, even though the signs of the sickness is still here and they say you are healed. Now that is not biblical. I mean, when it's healed, then it's healed. When it's not healed, then it's not healed. Because some people think that, to say that, well, the sickness is still here, that is, you know, giving the, uh, a foothold to the devil. That's not true. We're just saying the truth. He's not healed, we keep praying. Okay, he still have the pain. We keep praying. He still have the tumor. Keep praying. We don't have to say, okay, you are healed already. You have to believe that you are healed, even though it's the same condition. So we don't have to, you know, deny the fact. And, but we can believe that God can work in the hearts of people and God can use people and, and God can bring healing to people. And then share our testimonies when there is an opportunity. Uh, whenever there is opportunity, we want to share with people what God has done in our life and how God has used us. And then also, uh, for some people, would be to preach and to lead worship, to lead a meeting of uh, experiencing the Holy Spirit and to guide a church, to bring revival to a church, to bring revival to the area. So all this can be uh, that we can grow in the spiritual gifts, but we don't want to force the spiritual gifts, but we just say, Lord, you give me the motivation to do this, and I try to do it, and, and I'll do it in faith, and please, Lord, make it happen, that God can make it happen. So we, uh, we just, in faith, we find out from God what He wants us to do. And if He most motivates us to pray for people, uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we do that, and then uh, God can use us uh, in different ways. Now, because praying for people is something Jesus has promised that everyone, that signs will follow those who believe, that you can cast out demons in, in Jesus' name and then lay hands on the sick. So that's something we can train everyone. Train everyone to be filled with the Holy Spirit and also to take care of the sins and the problems. And then if they don't have the, uh, the sins bothering them or have uh, negative emotions and negative thinking and uh, then and don't have evil spirit and then they can start we can pray for them to see if they have any evil spirit and they don't have the evil spirit for a period of time they can start to pray for people first they can pray for people in the church we can pray for each other in the church practice praying for each other in the church and then when they experience the Holy Spirit and they learn how to do it and then they can go out and then pray for other people. So this is something we can train the people and train ourselves to build up this ability to pray for people. And then when we pray for people, uh, we can strengthen the spiritual life and also we can bring them to believe in Jesus. That we can pray for our neighbors and our friends, our relatives, uh, family members to bring them to Jesus, to believe in Jesus. 
and then receive God's guiding guidance by waiting on the Lord. John ten twenty seven. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So the Holy Spirit does speak to each one of us. Now, when does He speak to us? First, when we sin, He will tell us, you know, to repent. He will move us to repent. This is from the Holy Spirit. This is the voice of the Holy Spirit that every Christian would have experienced. That when we are about to sin or when we have sinned, we feel guilty. That that's the Holy Spirit speaking to us to guide us to repent. And then when we read the Bible and when we hear sermons, and then ideas will come into our heart to repent and to obey God. And also the Holy Spirit will guide us to preach the gospel to someone, to help someone spiritually. And these are the moves of the Holy Spirit. And then the more we wait on the Lord, especially when we first wake up or when we are about to fall asleep, when we first wake up, we are more open to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Many times I woke up, suddenly ideas came to me that, you know, there are many people who reported that, that when they uh, woke up and then ideas came into their mind. It's God speaking to them because at that time they are more quiet in the spirit so they can hear God's voice easier. So we notice these ideas. For instance, many of my ideas came sometimes in the morning, sometimes when I'm reading the Bible, sometimes when I'm preaching, sometimes when I'm preparing the messages and then God gave me ideas. So I pay attention to that. And sometimes I'm, I'm walking and suddenly I, and, and ideas came to me and I, and I write it down. So whenever we have ideas, we write it down and then, and then put it down uh, in a computer later. Okay, and then lay hand on the sick and they will recover. So uh, first build up an intimate relationship with God. First, you know, we want to cast out demons and lay hands on the sick. That first we want to build up an intimate relationship with God and take care of any sins and negative things in our lives or any evil spirit. When we don't detect any evil spirit, even when we pray for a long time to God, with the approval of the pastor, we can lay hands on people and to experience the Holy Spirit. So we can lay hands on people. Now this woman I pray for, at first she was screaming. She was screaming in a very painful way. She probably had evil spirit or have some pain in her life. And then later I pray for her to experience the joy of the Lord. And now you see that she was laughing. That in a short time, the pain went away and she was filled with joy. And this is how we can have the power of the Holy Spirit that we believe that. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now it's very important when we lay hands on people, don't push people. It's not the falling down that brings the blessings. It's, it's how open their heart is to God. And when they're open to heart, uh, their heart to God, they can experience the Holy Spirit. And now some people fall down and experience great work of God. Some people don't fall down and experience the great work of God. So we, it's not necessary for everyone to fall down. Um, now some people push them down. It's, it's for their glory. So that people say, wow, he is powerful. But actually people know that he pushed people down. It doesn't really, it's not good for the reputation of the pastor. And God doesn't like that. So we don't do things for our own pleasure, for our own glory. It, we do things to please God, not to please people. And lay on of hands can help people experience the Holy Spirit. There are many people who go on the street and pray for people. Acts eight seventeen. Then Peter and John place their hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. So we can lay hands on people and they can experience the Holy Spirit and we can uh, uh, ask them. Now, I pray for people, generally I'll ask them, uh, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then they say, oh, I experienced peace, comfort. And I said, this is God working in you. God is very real. He comes to you and gives you peace and comfort. God is very real. So God has blessed you. Do you want God to continue to bless you? And then he says, yes. And then I say, well, uh, Jesus Christ came to die for you and to give you eternal life. 
and to bless your whole life. I pray for you to ex experience the Holy Spirit experience the Holy Spirit because God has uh, sent Jesus to die for me so that I so I can pray for you to experience God and you can experience him too when you trust in God as your Savior do you want to uh, receive Jesus as your Savior and then we lead them to a prayer of repentance to Lord please forgive our sins and give us eternal life I'm sorry if that we have sinned against you uh, that we have sinned in our thoughts in our words in our deeds please forgive us and give us eternal life and then uh, so we can lead people to repent and trust in Jesus as their Savior and help people to follow God, to love God, to obey God. Now the laying on of hands will help people in different areas. First, to experience God's peace, freedom, joy, and love. Now many people have emotional problems. I first pray for them to experience the Holy Spirit. I say, Oh Lord Jesus, thank you. Uh, very often I use interactive prayer and the prayer of grace. God is blessing us. God is with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We want to love you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I pray for the person, the person feels more and more peaceful. After prayer, they will say, Wow, I'm so peaceful. My burdens go away. I feel so light in my body. And many people, the body sways. Now, is there biblical support? In Revelation 1.17, John saw uh, Jesus in a glorified form, and he fell to the ground. So, in the presence of God, we can fall to the ground. And then Saul, in Acts chapter 9, verse 4, he was you know, persecuting Christians, and then he saw Jesus on the way to Damascus and then he fell also to the ground so and then the soldiers wanted to arrest Jesus and Jesus said I am and then they also fell back so in God's presence people can fall down and when they experience the Holy Spirit they can fall down and if not so powerful yet or when their heart is not so open yet they might sway so that's also experiencing the Holy Spirit. And then we can tell them the swing of your body is from the Holy Spirit. God is working in your heart. Do you feel peace and the burdens go away and lightness of the body? Lightness of the body is like floating in heaven. It's like the burdens go away and the whole person floats in the presence of God. And many people experience that. And then they, the frustration, the anger, the unhappiness, go away and they say wow God is so real so this is first way uh, we can use this laying on of hands and then to experience revival of spiritual life that they are Christians but they don't love God enough and then when we pray for them they, they, they are zealous for the Lord oh, God is so wonderful God is so beautiful I want to love God more I want to obey God more and then three to experience physical and inner healing so they can experience physical healing the first time I saw healing right in front of my eye was uh, a few months after I experienced the Holy Spirit. And then I pray, I went to church to preach, and then I pray for some people. And then I asked them if they have experienced anything. And a woman jumped up and said, Wow, my backache is gone. And then another woman jumped up and said, My shoulder ache is gone. And they twist the body and move the arm. And wow, it's the first time that God convinced me that the miracles in the biblical time will happen today. And inner healing, actually that was just a few days after I experienced the inner healing of the Holy Spirit. I prayed for people and they, they cry for a long time. They experience the joy and the love of God and the, uh, the burdens go away. And, and, and uh, they start to have inner healing. And to be free of evil spirit. That I pray for many people to be free of evil spirit. And even when I was preaching sometimes, when I was, was preaching sometimes people, the evil spirit manifest. And then uh, we drive out the demons from them. And to pray for people to, to receive spiritual gifts. Now this is of course according to God's plan. But it will strengthen the spiritual gifts they have. Or what the spiritual gifts that God wants to give to them. God will strengthen the spiritual gifts. And to have supernatural experiences. Some people see Jesus or angels or go to heaven. 
uh, one time I prayed for a, a daughter of a pastor. At first, the daughter was a little resistant. She felt the power of God. And after a while, she just relaxed and then she fell down. After she fell down, she lie, lay there for over an hour. And she said that she went up to heaven. And God told her to take out the burdens from her heart. And sh her heart was free from burdens. And, and she uh, shared the testimony in the church after she got up. And then also laying her hands will help people to raise up people to serve God. There are many people with the experience of the Holy Spirit. They say, this is wonderful. I want to serve God too. I want to serve God like that too. I want to pray for people. Now, of course, it depends on the calling of God. Now, anyone can pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit, but not everyone will enter the ministry. They need the calling of God. Now, some people say, what is the calling of God? The calling of God is that they have a continual motivation to serve God, not just for power. You know, some people want to serve God because they say, I'll be standing in front of people preaching. I'll be praying for people with authority. They just think of power, not that. When we think of ministry, we think of, we want to bless people. I want to bless people. I want to help people spiritually. I want to raise up people's spiritual life. I want to change people's life. I want to raise up soldiers of God. So when people have this continual motivation that already came from God, because it is God who works in our, us to will and to act according to His good purpose. That's Philippians 2.13. It's God who works in us if we have this continual motivation to serve God, that already is a calling of God. So when we pray for people, what do we do? First, we need to build up a strong relationship with God and turn away from all sins. Sin can bring evil spirits. So first, we want to build up a strong presence of God. Whenever we pray, we want to feel the presence of God. Ah, hallelujah. Now, every time I pray, I can feel joy. I can feel power go through me. I can feel lightness of the body. I can feel something grasping me. I can feel the Holy Spirit holding on to me. I can feel power upon me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I stay in that presence for a long time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. So we enjoy God and we turn away from all sins because sins are destructive. God doesn't want us to live in sin. And then we can pray and sing to lead people to believe that God is loving them and help them to love God and we don't need to shout. So when we pray for people, we say, God is loving us. Relax. Think of God is right here. He wants to bless you. Thank you, Jesus. God is right here. God is right here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is blessing us. God is with us. God is happy that we come to Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just enjoy God. Enjoy His presence and declaring His presence. And then people will experience the Holy Spirit in the process. And don't need to shout. Now we can shout if you want to, but we don't need to shout all the time. And we know don't push people, just touching lightly. So I, when I pray for people, I just touch them lightly. I just touch them lightly. Falling does not help people. Experiencing God helps people. Now, if they fall and experience the Holy Spirit, that's great. But it's not the falling. It's that they experience the Holy Spirit that helps them. And then we can ask them if they have experienced the Holy Spirit to help them remember the experience and to go back to the same experience when they pray themselves. So when they experience the peace and the comfort to the body, so every time they pray, they, they want to open the heart so that they can feel the lightness of God coming. They can feel the peace and the joy and the power of God. Whatever they experience, they can experience that again when they pray themselves. Okay, and then manifestation of the Holy Spirit, falling down or swaying of the body. Now, how, uh, does, does the Bible talk about that? Revelation 1.17, when John saw Jesus, he fell at his feet as though dead. So John fell when he saw to glor glorify Jesus. And Acts 9, 3 and 4, 
that was Saul as he neared Damascus on his journey. Suddenly a light from heaven flashed upon him. He fell to the ground. So he also felt that the power of God came upon people and people can fall. And if not as powerful, then people can sway. And the swaying is very steady. And sometimes like a, a circular. It's like going around. And how people can experience the Holy Spirit? They can experience the peace that Jesus promised and burdens removed. All you labor and are heavy laden can find rest and the body in rest and comfort. Psalm 16, 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. So the body, the flesh, the flesh will rest in hope. And then love. Because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So the, the love of God can be poured upon us. Oh, and we can feel the love of God and the joy of God and the inner healing. Isaiah 61 verse 1, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And physical healing. By His stripes we are healed. And then demons being driven out. In my name they will cast out demons. And how to drive out demons from people. So this is using the gift of driving out demons. Help people to build up a loving relationship with God. So before I pray for people to drive out demons, I first tell them God loves them, their life is precious, their life is important, and God wants to bless you and drive out the demons. Now sometimes we cannot have the chance, don't have the chance to explain that. Because we are in a meeting and suddenly the person has the demons manifested and then we just pray. But in the prayer, we can tell them God is loving them. We can say, Lord, the Lord is loving you. God is blessing you. Believe that God is loving you. Believe that God is almighty. He has power over the evil spirit and the evil spirit cannot stay. And just have faith in Him. Believe that He is all powerful and He loves you. And you just relax and blow out the, bur uh, the burdens and blow out the evil spirit. And then they blow. Sometimes the evil spirit will come out. Now sometimes it comes the evil spirit comes out in one time or sometimes it comes out in you know in a, a period of time because sometimes people, people are not very very open to God and so it takes time for some people to be clear of demons. So first is a loving relationship with God. God loves you and you love him and he wants to bless you. And help the person to repent of all sins and negative thinking, emotions and lifestyle. So if he has any kind of sin, hatred or uh, unforgiveness or anger or depression, as we ask God to forgive us and cleanse us of all these sins because these sins will block the work of the Holy Spirit. And also the negative thinking and emotions. And three, help the person to handle problems in their life. If they have problems in their life that you know, they are unhappy with someone, they have problem in their daily life, in relationship with people in the family, they need to handle the problems. And lead the person in prayer and praise to help him experience the Holy Spirit. So after they trust in God and have a living relationship with God and repent of the sins and trust in Jesus as the Savior and handle the problem in their life, they will put down the anger toward people, they, uh, they agree to forgive people and they just relax and then we can uh, lead them to love God and then they experience the Holy Spirit more and more because when they experience the Holy Spirit more then the demons can be driven out and sometimes even when they experience the Holy Spirit the demons will start to come out so when they start to say Lord Jesus you're so wonderful God is so wonderful hallelujah praise you father praise you father God is so wonderful God is so wonderful God is full of love hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then the demons try to start to come out. And then in Jesus' name, we can cast out the demons. But we don't have to say that all the time. Now, I've seen people, they shout. Demons come out, come out, come out. And they shout for half an hour. That's too much. That gives people a lot of pressure and a lot of pressure on the throat. We don't need to do that. 
We can just enjoy God because God's presence will drive out demons. We can enjoy God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're loving us. You're blessing us. And relax. When people have evil spirit, tell them to relax and blow it out. And then a lot of times, immediately, they feel the demons come out. And then alternate with prayer and praise to build up the relationship with God. You know, not just driving out demons. Sometimes we love God and praise God. And then sometimes we can look in the right eye of the person being exorcised to command the demons to leave. For the demons can see us through the eye. So we can look into the person's eyes and tell the person to look into our right eye. Now, why the right eye? It's just in the Bible, the right, the right hand is a, uh, means authority. So look at the right eye and, and uh, in Jesus' name, cast out the demons. Now, I have this experience many times. I look in the right eye of people and then immediately they started to shout. The evil spirits start to manifest or they start, they get very stiff or they fall down right away or they uh, have fear. And then some people said they saw something in between me, my eye and his eye, that this is um, evil spirit trying to block the eye. So we help the person to say, have faith in God trust in God and believe that the evil spirit has to go and then we cast out the evil spirit and then he can see my eyes more and more clearly. So this is one way to be helpful, to look into the right eye of the person and cast out the demons. Well, we don't do that for a long time. As, as I said, we don't have to cast out the demons for a long time. We can love God and worship God and enjoy God. In the process, ask the person what he's experiencing in order to be able to do the suitable thing for him. For instance, he's feeling some pressure in the heart. Many people experience that. There's some headache or ache in some parts of the body. Then we lay hand on that part of the body. Now, except if it's a woman, then you ask a woman to lay hand on the sensitive parts of the body. And uh, so we want to ask what the person is experiencing. If the person says, I'm very free, I'm very peaceful, then we say, thank God, thank God. He's delivering you. He has delivered deliver you. So we can rejoice and thank God for that. Now when people thank God for, for the deliverance, then they experience more the work of God. When they experience some healing and then they say, I have experienced some healing. And then we tell them, thank God. And then immediately he say, thank you, thank you. And then his pain will go away even more. I have prayed for someone who was screaming in my meeting because she was in great pain. And then when I prayed for her, I asked her, what, have you experienced anything? She said, I felt peace. I felt comfort. I said, thank God for that. And then she said, I thank God, thank God that you have brought me some comfort. Immediately she felt better. And then she can walk out to give a testimony. And at first she was screaming for a long time with pain. And then teach the person to build up his relationship with God every day and take care of his problems in life. Spend more time praying and casting out the demons. So that's something he can do every day. Build up the relationship with God and take care of different problems. And then worshiping God, loving God, and believing that God is loving him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then he can also cast out demons in Jesus' name. Now, some people say lay Christians should not cast out demons because the demons will come back. That's not true. Jesus said to all, all people who have faith you know signs will follow those who have faith anyone who has faith can cast out demons the key not to have the demons come back is to build up a strong relationship with God and take care of problems now many people continue to have the evil spirit because they have anger or they worry about their life or they have bad relationship with their spouse and they cannot handle it now if we have if someone has bad relationship with the spouse, what he can do is try to build the relationship. But if the other person doesn't want to build the relationship, then what he can do is to accept that he has problem. But I will continue to be nice to him. I will continue to forgive him. I will not take his negative words and I will not take, you know, whatever he does to me, I will not take it internally. 
so I won't be affected by him. I can put down his negative words. I don't worry about that because that's his problem. I don't carry his problems, but I continue to be nice to him, hopefully to change him. Then I'm not affected by the relationship. Then the demons can be driven out. But some Christians say, my, my spouse is not nice to me, so I continue to, be, to have anger with him. Then, uh, then the demons cannot be driven out. Then, then he is suffering. It's no point. It's no point to continue to suffer. And the way to do it is to say, if he continues to be angry, he continues to be sinning, it's his problem. I don't have to take it. I don't have to carry his burden. I can be nice to him. I can forgive him. But I don't have to carry his burdens that I can forgive him. Okay? Now, it's time already for your lunch. So we'll stop here for an hour and then we'll come back. And let's have a prayer. Please stand up and open your spirit to God to experience the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now you can cry with me together. Thank you, Jesus. You are loving us. You are with us. Thank you, Jesus. You love us very much. You are with us now. You are very happy that we come to you. Whenever we come to you, you are happy with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are a loving God. You love us all the time. We want to enjoy you. We want to stay in your presence. God, you are so wonderful. You are so good. We want to enjoy you. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Give us the spiritual gifts according to your will. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Give us love for you and love for people that we really love you with our heart and we have compassion on people and we love people. Give me spiritual gifts so we can serve you. Give us the uh, anointing of the Holy Spirit so we can cast out demons from people and we can lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. Oh Lord Jesus, we need you. We thank you. We love you. We adore you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. You're so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Fill us with the joy of the Lord. Lord, give us the joy of the Lord. Give us the joy of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come Holy Spirit and fill our hearts. <laughs> oh, give us freedom and give us joy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you have experienced the work of the Holy Spirit, you can share that on a WhatsApp and respond to me. And if you have any question, you can respond to me. So we'll come back in one hour and then uh, uh, in this time you can keep praying yourself to experience the Holy Spirit more, uh, to learn how to open your heart, to enjoy God, to be filled with the joy of the Lord. Now you want to feel with the joy of the Lord, you can think of the goodness of God and you can start to rejoice in the Lord and, and start with your own uh, laughing. Thank you Lord Jesus, you're so wonderful. That's so wonderful. I th think of your delicious food you created, your our wonderful body, the re beautiful nature. Thank you. I, I can rejoice in you. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and we can cry from our spirit. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Now, it's not wrong to laugh in our prayer because the, the Bible says rejoice in the Lord. But this holy laughter is not laughing ourselves. I did not laugh myself. I just think of God and the joy will start to come out. So after a while, your sp spirit is filled with joy. And then when you learn to worship God from the spirit, then the joy can flow in. And then you can experience His joy right away. Hallelujah.